Why do you think the figure of Christ is central both to the Muslim faith and the Christian faith? And what do you think that says about what we share in common? Because I really don't understand that. It's a mystery to me. Okay. Muslims are the only other major world religion who believe in uh, Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as the Prophet. Right, he, he had the right. Virgin and this birth. is a strange thing, yeah, so we yeah, should definitely yeah, be yeah. trying to sort that out. If you are a Christian and for some reason you've been deceived by these Muslim apologists or these Dawa gangsters to think that the same Jesus we have in the Bible is the same Jesus we have in the Quran, then I think you aren't doing a good job at winning souls because they are all lost people and for jesus to even appear in the quran is a mystery no muslim is a muslim if he does not believe in jesus christ peace be upon him we believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of almighty god we believe that he was the messiah translated christ we believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention which many modern day christians do not believe we believe that he gave life to the dead with god's permission we believe he healed those born blind and lepers with god's permission the Muslims, the Christians are going together. I wouldn't take much of your time. Let's watch this video by Paul Washer, who gives us the differences between the Muslim Jesus and the Quran Jesus and then the biblical Jesus for better um, clarity. Let's watch. In their system, they have Jesus. Jesus was a man. He was not God. He did not die. He went to heaven like Elijah. He did not die, therefore he did not rise. He did not die, therefore he did not provide an atonement for anyone, because no one can provide an atonement for anyone else. He is a man, he is a prophet, he is nothing more. He went to heaven like Elijah, and he's in heaven right now, standing alongside Allah, waiting for Allah to send him back. Now the question to ask is, why would Allah want to send Jesus back? has a lot of prophets to pick from, why does he send Jesus back? Answer, so that when he shows up, he can correct all the Christians who have misunderstood who he is. Sources for this again, the Quran and the Sunnah. The great event of the coming of Christ, of coming of Jesus, is so that this prophet, this man who comes back can straighten out the misdirected, misguided, misconceiving Christians who think he was God, who died and rose again and provided atonement. He'll come back and straighten it out. And by the way, after he gets here, he'll get married, have children and die and be buried next to Muhammad. That's the Muslim Jesus. In their eschatology, again, quoting their sources exclusively, there are three great signs of the end of history. And each of them is a man. The first man that will come in the end of history is the Mahdi, M-A-H-D-I. Sometimes he's called the 12th Imam. Every time Ahmadinejad over in Iran gives a speech, he says, glory to the Mahdi, glory to the 12th Imam. He's waiting for the coming of the Mahdi. What, what is he coming to do? Let me summarize. The Mahdi will be a messianic figure. He will be a descendant of Muhammad. He will be an unparalleled, unequaled leader. He will come out of a crisis of turmoil. He will take control of the world. He will establish a new world order. He will destroy all who resist him. He will invade many nations. He will make a seven-year peace treaty with the Jews. He will conquer Israel and massacre the Jews. He will establish Islamic world headquarters at Jerusalem. He will rule for seven years, establish Islam as the only religion. He will come on a white horse with supernatural power. He will be loved by all people on earth. If that sounds familiar, that is a precise description of the biblical Antichrist. Absolutely step by step by step by step. The Bible's Antichrist is their Mahdi. We know that the rider on the white horse in Revelation 6 is the Antichrist. They use that verse to describe their Mahdi. Why am I giving you all this? Because the description of the Mahdi is exactly the description of the biblical 
Antichrist, the beast of Revelation 13. And you go into any kind of a study of that and you will find that all the details match up perfectly. The, the Bible's Antichrist is Islam's savior and world conqueror who establishes a universal Islamic kingdom. And there's a second sign, a second person, and it is Jesus. The Mahdi is not Jesus. The Mahdi is greater than Jesus, and that's important to their system because if you have somebody greater than Jesus, then the Christians were wrong. So Jesus will return. Yes, Muslims believe that Jesus will come again. They believe in the return of Jesus, N not the true Jesus. The Jesus of Islam, not God, didn't die, didn't rise, didn't provide a sacrifice for sin, but He does return. He's a prophet, and He comes back, and He has one purpose when He comes back, and that is to assist and aid the Mahdi. He returns, listen to this, as a radical Muslim. He comes back as a radical Muslim. He will arrive, by the way, at a minaret near Damascus. And he will come back holding the wings of two angels who flew him down to meet the gathering army of the Mahdi in the east, the army of the black flags. Jesus, when He comes back, will pray to the Mahdi, who is greater than He. He will acknowledge the Mahdi as His Lord. He will make a pilgrimage to Mecca. He will worship Allah, and thus He will lead all Christians who will follow Him to reject their notion of Jesus and accept the real Jesus, who is nothing but a prophet and a man. He will establish worldwide Sharia law. He will become the greatest Muslim evangelist. And he will be the final witness on the Day of Judgment against non-Muslims. Christians everywhere will affirm that they were wrong, that the gospel is wrong, the New Testament is wrong. He didn't die. He didn't rise. He isn't God. He isn't the Son of God. He Himself will come back and point out how wrong we've been. He will correct all misinterpretations and all misrepresentations. Let me quote what their literature says. He will shatter crosses. That's metaphoric for the destruction of the church, a symbol of Christianity being placed in the church. He will kill pigs. He will abolish the tax on non-Muslims because there won't be any living non-Muslims. Can't tax dead people. And then He will do one more thing. He will kill the Islamic Antichrist. He will kill the Islamic Antichrist. Then He will die and be buried by Muhammad, but not until He has destroyed Christianity by revealing who He really is. Well, who is this? You compare what He does to the false prophet in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, 16, 19, 20, refer to the beasts coming out of the earth, the false prophet, who aids and abets the Antichrist. He is, as the Mahdi, is the exact replica of the Antichrist, the Jesus prophet in Islam is the exact parallel to the false prophet who aids and abets the Antichrist. One of their writings says, he espouses the cause of the Mahdi. He is the Mahdi's executioner. He is the Mahdi's enforcer. He is the Mahdi's prophet. And it is he who kills the Antichrist. That leads me to the third person. The Antichrist will show up. The Muslims call him Dajjal. He is the great deceiver. He comes to earth on a mule, and he's blind in one eye. He is an infidel. He is a false miracle worker. 
this Antichrist, this Islamic Antichrist. But you know who he claims to be? He claims to be Jesus, the Son of God. He claims to be deity. He will attempt to stop the Mahdi and the true Jesus, but the true Jesus will slaughter him. This is their view of the true Christ. Our Jesus is their Antichrist. Our Antichrist is their Redeemer. It is a satanic counterfeit that is in complete reverse. The army, this is a quote, the army of Satan will be led by a person who will claim to be Jesus Christ. There will be a great battle. The Muslim Jesus will fight the false Jesus and kill him and establish Islam forever. The truth is, the true Jesus will destroy the Antichrist and the false prophet and establish his kingdom forever. This is Satan's complete counterfeit. Muslim world domination. And Islam is moving across the West rapidly in Europe, isn't it? So right at the very end, somebody's going to say, I'm Jesus. Somebody else is going to say, I'm Jesus. Who are you going to believe? That's just one form of this deception that will show up at the end. And even now it's deceiving people. There are a whole world of Muslims who who, who think Jesus is someone he is not and consequently reject the true Jesus. I know there are so many people out there, especially Christians who want to be super loving to the extent that they do not want to tell the Muslim they are wrong or their Quran is false. And so they tend to live with them. I mean, sometimes they even go to the mosque with them to let them know how loving they are you are wrong because these are good people you are sending to hell. I tend not to understand how eyewitnesses who worked with Jesus would write for someone who showed up 700 years later after that fact to claim he knows Jesus better than the eyewitnesses. And for that matter, we should take his words. One interesting thing about the Quran being the final revelation is that others have also claimed their book is the final revelation. We have the Mormons and then the Jehovah's Witness also claiming the same. And so our book is the final revelation doesn't really stack up. Also, one argument you would find Muslims making is that Jesus said he is going and if he goes, he would send down the comforter and that comforter being Muhammad, which isn't true because right in the uh, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, we come to realize the Comforter isn't Muhammad, as the Muslims are claiming. If you are a Christian and you happen to live with Muslims or have Muslims around, well, these are people who seem very radical. I mean, I have some around me. They wouldn't listen. They, they are so hard on what they've been taught. But in love, you proclaim the gospel to them. Also do well to pray and share that whatever seed that you've planted, the Holy Spirit will water it, right? But never make that mistake of arguing with them because they are very loud. These are people bought by the precious blood of Jesus and for some reason have been deceived. And so if you care for them, you tell them the truth. If you want more content like this, kindly don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Until my next video, peace out.